Is your town corrupt? Maybe. I'm Charles Blaine and this is Texas Tomorrow. Are you worried about your kids' future? You should be. You're listening to Texas Tomorrow with Charles Blaine. Join Charles as he talks about the people and issues that are affecting you and your family at the local level of government. Whenever we hear about political corruption, we often think of big towns or entire states, someone overseeing a massive department and rerouting hundreds of millions of dollars or passing million dollar contracts off to friends and family members. But in reality, those are the outliers. Those are typically few and far between. Corruption is usually small, under our noses, and it goes unnoticed unless something major happens. And it's often not exposed unless or until someone on the inside gets fed up, someone gets sloppy, or citizens start to dig in because they notice something is happening that's a little bit weird in their local government. And it often happens in some of the poorer towns, ones without much agency and even less outside attention that lend themselves to corruption like Crystal City, Texas, a few years ago. This town, about 120 miles outside of San Antonio, just a few years ago only had one city council member who wasn't facing federal corruption charges. The FBI alleged that most of the city council members helped each other secure bribes in exchange for city contracts. And similarly, a few miles north of the U.S.-Mexico border in Progreso, Texas, for nearly a decade, elected officials who all happened to be a part of the same family used their positions to get bribes from county and school district vendors. Patton Village, Texas, made a list of 11 insanely corrupt towns. They used speed traps and radar guns from police in this town to help city's revenue increase. And it ended up that 90% of the revenue that the city received was for traffic violations. It was so bad that it forced a state rep to pass legislation capping the amount that cities can raise from traffic to 30% of their total budget. And last year in Coffee City, Texas, the police force was disbanded after an investigation found that it wrote most of the traffic violations for any town of its size in Texas. And many of the officers who were hired had trouble pasts in other departments. More than half of the department had been suspended, demoted, terminated, or dishonorably discharged from their previous law enforcement jobs. And just this week, prosecutors offered a plea deal to the former police chief there who is facing six felony counts. These stories are endless, and they span from county and cities to school districts and special purpose districts. They include county judges and sheriffs, council members and city attorneys, and they exist everywhere. This is an issue that captivates the public attention when it receives it, but too often it goes unnoticed for far too long. Unlike big cities in Texas, small towns don't have nearly as many eyes on them. They don't have the attorney general's office focused on them. They don't have media outlets pouring through Texas Public Information Act requests. And too often, residents who live there think they are better off because their neighbor, their friend, their cousin or their brother is a city council member. They don't typically receive the level of scrutiny that their larger counterparts do. And so that's where you come in. It's important to not become complacent with your local government. Complacency breeds incompetence, and the second we feel that this can never happen in our town is when it does. Ask questions because it's your right to do so. Watch local government meetings, and when things don't make sense, don't just take their word for it, dig a little deeper. Not only do you have a right, but you have a responsibility to look into these issues and to make sure that the government that's supposed to be representing you is actually doing so and not padding its own pocket. Again, I'm Charles Blaine, and this is this week's episode of Texas Tomorrow. I hope you took something away from this, and I hope you'll take this as an opportunity to look into what's going on in your town, in your city, your school district, or whatever other local government entity that you pay taxes to and that's supposed to respond to you. If there's an issue that you think we need to be covering that we haven't, please make sure to let us know, but also make sure to share this episode with your friends, your family, like on social media, and make sure you share it on social media as well. 